Over the last four years, we've made huge strides in building our own home and putting in place systems to make our home function off the grid. The further we get into winter, the less sun we're gonna have. We're bringing in a little over a thousand watts in string one. As life has transitioned away from needing to establish the basic shelter and power structures for our family, we've been able to start focusing more on our future. Expanding our food supply and securing financial security are at the top of our list, which means battling new mistakes. It's what it is and now we need to remedy the situation as well as learning new skills. What do you think? As we continue to pursue what we consider true freedom. When we first decided to go solar and live entirely off the grid four years ago, I remember being a ball of nerves because we had no idea what we were getting into and we had zero experience with solar. Through our own research and building onto our system slowly over time to meet the goals for our family, we got a good handle on everything that we needed to do and everything that we needed to have in order to make our home function as a modern home. And surprisingly, there's very little upkeep for our system. The further we get into winter, the less sun we're gonna have, so that's one of the reasons why this is the right time to get out here and get them cleaned up. You can see how dirty the panels are. I wipe it off. Not too bad considering our driveway is a dirt road, but they could use some cleaning. You can do the scrubbing and mommy will fill the bucket up for you with fresh water, okay? Okay, but can you help me scrub? It's pretty hard. It's pretty heavy, isn't it? Yeah. We typically only need to clean the solar panels twice a year and that's partially because our solar array is so large and does such a great job of capturing the amount of power that we need to function normally. But being off grid means that we have to rely on ourselves for all of our own power and all of our own water. And because of that, we rely on multiple systems to keep everything functioning. From being able to heat our home off of both solar and off of wood heat, to having ample battery storage and a large array to cover us on cloudy, overcast, and snowy days, and also having a backup power system to charge our batteries when we need. Push off, and we hit the exert off. Shut down. Okay. The purpose for our backup generator is to charge our batteries in the event of an emergency or low sunlight hours or a few days with the snow, all that good stuff. So we run our house as normal all the time. So we run washers, dryers, dishwashers, all that stuff. And this thing serves a purpose. We only had to use it probably five to seven times last year. But the purpose is to recharge the batteries because uh, we don't dictate our lives on energy consumption. If the batteries get low, this guy turns on automatically, recharges, and we keep operating as normal. Channel locks, most useful tool out there. Can't tell me otherwise. So it's quite overcast today. That's pretty typical for this time of year. And it's one of the reasons that we built up our solar array the way that we did was so that we could account for these super cloudy days, which we're pretty much gonna ride this type of weather out now until spring, honestly. But despite it being overcast and also earlier in the day, we're at 72% charge, which is great. I've been doing laundry today. I've been running the dishwasher. Uh, Ellie was watching a movie earlier today. So we've been running like normal in there. And as for what we're currently bringing Bringing in, we're bringing in a little over a thousand watts on string one, close to a thousand on string two, and another thousand on string three. So oversizing our solar array and taking into account our battery bank in here and also having a backup generator out there are all ways that we've ensured that we're going to be able to live normally day in and day out, no matter what season of the year it is, and that we can just function like relatively normal people just off grid. So we're gonna fire up for a minute, make sure we have no leaks, and then we'll turn it off, let it sit for five minutes, then we'll check oil level again. If we're good, we're good to go, we'll close it up and walk away. I think you're about ready to start flipping that 300 pound ram out there and trimming his nails. Oh, yourself. yeah, that actually sounds fun. <laughs> you're gonna give him a go? Mm -hmm. You got all that? Lots and 
got some wood because uh, uh, it's going to be cold on Christmas. And I'm yes, going to be is. cold. Uh, and it's going to be fun. It's going to be hope, nice and warm. Yeah, and I hope there's snow. We are headed into our last couple of weeks at the renovation house. This project certainly hasn't always gone as planned, but we have found ways to work through the challenges, and slowly but surely, the renovation house is turning out better than we expected. So how do you want to do this? Do you want to start with the center and work your way out? Or what's facing? I think if we're thinking that they need to be two feet apart, the okay. vertical pieces, that in order to figure out where our... So while we wait for the shower pan mortar to cure for a full day, we're gonna go ahead and jump onto this project behind us. It's not a project that we saw coming. <laughs> it's kind of just one that we saw the disaster that is the drywall situation behind us and we jumped on it like we, ha we have to fix this. We basically have to hide the drywall because it looks like it's uh, pretty bad looking. It's bubbled out and it's, you can see everything. So by us making a grid pattern, it takes your eyes away from the drywall because when you walk into the house, you see a big giant wall. You look at it, you're like, oh man, that was like Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's really no like easy way to put it. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's what it is. And now we need to remedy the situation. And the easiest thing for us to do is to distract from that mess. Yes. So that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. I think the hardest part is going to be to figure out the spacing. I'm glad you're here, girl. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> dead center is 42 and 11 16. That's dead center there. That's dead center. I can't do that center. How about that print, you know? It's one of those things that Aaron shows me a picture. He I need you to build this. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm just going to end out. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. It'll turn out great, right, Josh? Oh, fuck. <laughs> I didn't hear the confidence in your voice there. So what's your vision on the elevation and the height and how to box this thing out? Because the vertical pieces are relatively close together, yep. we need to go wider with the grid pattern. So the Taller. horizontal pieces, yeah. Okay. Like at least three feet. So if we go up every three feet, you have a board in the center of this one. Is that what you're saying? So yeah. we get one here, then one there, and up there. Okay, and then every foot and a half that goes here, foot and a half. Yes. Foot and a half. Okay. Yeah. Halfway, you're splitting it in half, going up. Okay, so yeah. the boxes themselves is every three feet. Yes, and then each, I got you. each category is staggered. It's gonna look good, Joe. Yeah. It's such an easy project to just bring a lot of charm and flash. And uh, the thing is, I like vaguely recall you complaining about the design in that bedroom over there. I don't recall that whatsoever. We're done. It's sanded, <laughs> it's good to go, it's ready for paint. It's not a change, Josh, it's a tweak. Oh my God. It's a tweak. So keep in mind, we're not going to be completing the top portion of this simply because all of the planking on the vaulted ceilings is not done. And before we can tie these top pieces into the ceiling, we actually need to have the ceiling in place. Otherwise, we could make a mistake and it could not look good then. So we're just going to work from the bottom up and we're going to leave the top portion undone and then we'll come back around and we'll finish that. It's going to sit on top of that, that beam yeah. part right there. Yeah. yeah. Would you want to box this fucker out at all? We'll cross that bridge when we get to it, Josh. <laughs> So remember
You can see already we're not even done. You guys can see, I'm trying to point right here. That line right there in that wall, you can still see that. The one on that wall, where's it at? You can, I mean, it, it's hiding the issue. It hides the issue. It's doing exactly what we wanted it to. And it, it looks cool. I mean, it adds something to the adds a lot of character, I think. Yeah. Because I was wonder, always wondering if we are going to do that big, huge, tall wall, but uh, Aaron found a spot for it. <laughs> or whatever. It's good. I like it. You did yeah. a fabulous job. Thank Good you. Okay. It's a little bit quirky and neat. You know, it makes the house interesting. So. Yeah, so it's like it's going to continue all the way up. Yeah, it's going to And go over to the edge of this wall right there. So it's going to go all the way up. It's going to be cool. I'm just glad that we're not questioning ourselves over it. You know, because sometimes we do projects and we get like partway through it and it's like the ugly duckling stage. Yeah, I know. But there's no ugly okay, duckling stage there here. Isn't. You can tell where it's going to go. It's going to look great. Yeah. We're going to take it all the way up top and all the way across. So we're pretty much at the point we got to start fudging a few things to make things fit. So I'm going to box around where that faux beam goes. The, that right there with the drywall all tied together. We need to somehow take the obvious and keep your eye away from that and see everything else. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that one right there is a little more extreme than the one that is right here, but you can't see that one at all. Even now that I'm looking at it, I still can't see it. So it's great. So. Once I wrap that and start getting things hatching across going up, I'm hoping everything's hidden. It's magically going to disappear. I hope so, but I'm hoping it's not so bad that the part that goes horizontal, it's not going against it, it has a, a half-inch gap on both sides. Cock it, paint it, call it a day, Josh. Cock it, paint it, call it a day? Yeah. It's a good motto. Yeah, that's how I roll. Okay, me too. Let's do it. <laughs> You can't see the drow anymore. Yeah. Which is awesome. I know. Bravo to you. So you still see it right down there. There's two boxes. Now the boxes there, you can't see anything. When you go up, you still see it slightly. You see it more as it goes up because we're not finished yet. Once we get everything up and around and built around the entire thing, you're not going to see it. It's like a little shadow. It's going to be hidden. It's pretty awesome. I think you did that. Like, I'm super, super impressed. It's hidden. It, it Completely is. hidden. <laughs> She, she had a home run with this one. We had to do something, <laughs> and we did it. <laughs> this renovation house has had more than its fair share of challenges, but this home is worth saving. Once built years ago by the original homeowner, it is full of charm and potential. To see it now, painted, trimmed, and once again coming back to life is something that we won't soon forget. The exterior is almost fully complete, with the new addition of the back deck, final paint, and the fascia around the soffit now being installed. We've successfully tackled almost all of the issues this house has had, both the ones glaringly obvious and the ones hidden. The only issue yet to be solved is the connection to the grid. As you guys know, we've been without power for a few months now at the renovation house, and uh, we're really excited about getting power turned back on. The power company came back there, put the meter in there, no power. If you all do remember that we dug up the wire, we thought we may have hit it, and we confirmed we did not hit it. So we had our fingers crossed, power's getting turned back on, the inspection was done, ready to go, and uh, there's no power. Uh, the power company checked their transformer, the transformer is functioning and working. Somewhere in between the meter socket and the transformer, the line's cut. So the bad news is, now it needs to be replaced from the meter to the pole itself. It's gonna be a very expensive to fix, probably around 300 feet of digging with uh, three inch pipe in the ground and uh, new wire. And we'll be without power for several more weeks and the power company actually told me that uh, we need to pull the deck up because they can't dig a three inch pipe under the deck and stub it up against the house the way it's sitting right now. But we prepared for the worst a while back and we actually put a three inch pipe underneath the deck expecting this could be an outcome. Therefore, we don't need to pull up the deck and luckily for us, it's actually on the power company's dime, not ours. 
I couldn't imagine starting our day without AG1. For the past year, it has been our go-to drink every single morning that provides us with nutritional insurance day after day. AG1 by Athletic Greens is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, prebiotics, and adaptogens. It's basically a superfood complex that has all of the goodness we need to fill in the gaps in our diet and to keep our energy up throughout the day, all by having just one simple serving. We just grab eight ounces of water, drop in one scoop or travel packet, and we're good to go. AG1 is the easiest way for us to invest in our health and support our energy, immunity, gut health, and digestion. If you're interested in trying AG1, click our link in the description box below to get a year's supply of vitamin D and five travel packs for free with your first purchase. This is a game changer for supporting your immune system. AG1 provides your body with everything you need for optimal performance every single day. Now let's get back to the build. I feel like we're off to a good start on the garden already. I know yeah. you can build, but the real question is, do you have a green thumb, Josh? I don't. <laughs> At all. So the plan for the layout of our 100 by 100 garden space is one half is all garden beds and the other half is the fruit trees that we planted last year, as well as berry bushes. We are so looking forward to this upcoming growing season. And I think that we have a pretty good start here. We're gonna get these beds built out of cedar and concrete blocks and then start filling the inside of them. So we're using cedar. We went back and forth between cedar and pine. Cedar lasts a lot longer than pine. Pine beyond here would rot a lot sooner, but the cost between pine and cedar is a big difference. So these cedar planks are good middle of the road. They're three quarter inch planks versus uh, inch and a half, what this is supposed to be. <laughs> but the price is astronomical going from three quarter to inch and a half. So we stayed at three quarter, we're making wedges and we're pounding all those in and uh, about to have garden beds. Wait, are you consistently putting these in the same way? Yeah. Like rough on inside or rough on out? You like it? Yeah. I think we should do some wine berries. Yeah. Wine berries? Definitely yeah. wine berries. Yeah. When Daddy finishes building them, we can lay these on the bottom, okay? Yeah, I'm so excited to pick the I'm so excited about my vegetables. Your vegetables? Yeah, but I think I'm most excited about the broccoli and carrots. <laughs> 